Welcome to the Quality HVACR YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm covering five tools that I think have really helped me throughout my HVACR journey. Now, these are in no particular order. These are just some tools that I have on the van that I don't necessarily use every day. Some I might, some I might use every once in a while, but these are some phenomenal tools that really helped me be more efficient and more reliable at my job. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is what I'm calling the line set kit by Hillmore Tools. Now, the Milwaukee box is something that I have, but Hillmore creates these foam trays to be able to put in this particular box. So on the very top is the line set pipe cleaning kit, right? So it's got this little gun here and all the different sizes, depending on what size copper that you're uh, gonna be cleaning out. So if, for instance, this is a three quarter. Now what you're gonna do this side, the hose side will go on to your, your tubing and you'll just hand tighten it. And this threads into your gun. And then with this gun, you're gonna connect your nitrogen tank. And then within that gun, you open it up here and it has this open slot and you're gonna put one of these foam plugs in there. Of course, you wanna use which, you know, the size that you're gonna be actually cleaning. So if it's three quarter, you grab the three quarter plug and so on. Now, all you gotta do is put this little net bag on the outside. So that way, when you do blow that plug through, you're gonna be blowing it from the inside out. When you blow it through, this little bag is gonna catch it. Normally what I'll do is you can, uh, you can either just blow these plugs directly through to remove any kind of resi residual oil that's in the system. Uh, you can put some type of a you know, line set cleaner in there first if you want to, to help kind of purge everything out as well as run the plugs through. So whenever I'm doing a retrofit or a replacement, this is my go-to tool for that situation because I wanna make sure the existing line set, if we're reusing it, is completely clean. There's nothing in there. There's no residual oils, nothing. It's ready to go for the new system and the new refrigerant. So that's where this kit really comes into play. I know for a fact that the line set's gonna be clean, free of any kind of debris or anything like that. All right, so the bottom half of this kit is packed pretty well. It has their uh, hydraulic swaging tool, which is really nice. It's handheld, it can swage your copper. So if you're gonna be brazing and you don't wanna actually braze on a coupling, you can just use this tool to open that copper up to receive you know, another piece of tubing to extend it. So depending on what size copper that you're gonna be using, you just grab the die for that. And this just eliminates having to use uh, fittings, couplings, or even 90s, because if you grab this tool, you can actually bend your copper. So you can, you know, bend offsets, 45s, 90s, uh, whatever it is, you just grab the, the fitting that you need. So that's for 3 8 and then you pop this guy on, and then you can bend whatever degree angles that you need. So you can even make fittings if you need to, um, or you can bend the copper that's already in the field and create a 90 for yourself and just keep going, uh, just whatever. It's very versatile, right? So this allows you to um, be able to customize your refrigerant lines in the field or make fittings if you need to make them for whatever reason. Um, you just have everything right here. Uh, it is, it does have a reverse bending kit. So you put on these attachments right here and you can either bend the 90 towards you as you're using the tool or away from you. So depending on what situation you're in, um, this will hand it for you. So again, this has everything you really need for your line sets, right? A deburring tool is right there. You can swedge it. Uh, bend your 90s, whatever you need to do there, and you can go to brazing, pressing, whatever it is that you're doing. So between, between these two things here, you're pretty much good to go. So that's why I really wanted to showcase this tool because um, I think it's, in my mind, it's mandatory to have uh, when you are reusing an existing line set and you need to clean that line set and get it prepped and ready for the new system. And then of course, if you're having to like extend or reroute the line set, you need to be able to bend it instead of just cutting it and brazing on a bunch of fittings. It takes longer and it's more expensive because you have to buy all those fittings. Um, 
this is just a really good kit to have. So anyway, not only that, having these trays like this, where it goes into that Milwaukee kit and you can grab it and go over to where you're working and you've got everything you need, it's pretty awesome. All right, so kind of leaning on the line set situation, the next tool is gonna be the press tool. So this one is by RLS and I absolutely love pressing. I press as much as I possibly can. Um, it's one of those situations where it doesn't replace brazing by any means. And a lot of people kind of think it does, or you know, they, have a, they think negative about it because you know, it's taking away the skill of brazing. And that's just not true. There's a lot of reasons why you still need to braze. This is just another tool in your toolbox. Now, I enjoy using this tool. That's why I'm talking about it today. But when I'm on a job doing an install or a repair or whatever the situation is, you know, replacing dryers, um, they even make long uh, dryers with long stub outs to where you can press couplings on. Um, it's, just, it's just fast, it's easy, and it is very reliable. Um, those, these fittings have been out for quite a while now. I'm not sure how many, 9, 10, 11 years, something like that. Um, and they do super, super high pressure testing with their fittings. Now, the press in general gets a bad rap from a lot of people for probably a couple of reasons. One, some folks, they're just, they don't understand. They don't, under, they don't know how reliable the press really is, uh, so they don't trust it. Um, and then, because they probably haven't even used it. And then secondly, what we're finding out is that the fittings themselves and the tool, so the process of actually pressing is not the problem when we have leaks. It's typically the tubing itself. So if the tubing is not, you know, like, you know, nice and perfectly round, or if it's really thin walled, or if there's like a, a gouge in the actual piping, you know, things like that. So it's not the fitting. When they do their high uh, hydro pressure testing into the thousands of PSI, it's never the fitting that fails. It's always the tubing itself. Just right in the middle of the tubing, boom, it just opens up. And we're, you know, everything's getting cheaper and thinner, thinner walled copper. So that's really the main deal is just understanding that you know, your copper needs to be prepped, it needs to be clean, but the reality is if you're brazing, it's the same thing. You're going through the same process of preparation, right? Um, you just need to you know, deburr the inside and the outside, which you should be doing if you're brazing. Cleaning it, you should be doing if you're brazing. The only really extra step is that you're putting on the depth gauge and marking it, so that way when you put your fitting on, you know that it's fully seated before you press. Um, anyway, this tool right here has gotten me out of some sticky situations where I needed to uh, you know, fix a piece of line set like in the wall. It was really hard to get to as far as brazing wise. And this was able to get in there and you know, press on a 90 or a coupling. Or if you're working in an attic and you're deep in the insulation, you don't wanna be brazing up there. It's just you know, lugging around all the equipment to do that when all you need is this and you can quickly you know, make that connection. So anyway. Um, I've done large, you know, commercial um, installs where we're doing, you know, a 20 ton install and it has two line sets, inch and three eighths suction, uh, five eighths liquid lines. And I was able to do all the 90s and everything because you can't bend, you know, inch and three eighths or you can't even bend any of the hard and drawn copper, right? So being able to press on these couplings, I was able to do that install a lot faster than if I had to, uh, you know, braze all of those fittings. So anyway. You're either on you know, the press team or you're not. Doesn't really matter to me. I am, I absolutely love it. Um, I've had zero issues and I've been using it for years now. And uh, anyway, it made today's list. All right, so the next tool is actually kind of a two-piece design. Now, they, you, can buy, you buy them independently, but in my opinion, you should have them both because they kind of work together. Now, these are both by uh, Zebra Instruments. Now. Pretty much every motor out there nowadays is gonna be uh, an ECM blower motor or an X13 style motor, right? Like a torque motor. And we need, they're, they're a two piece design. You have the module and then you have the actual motor itself and we need to be able to troubleshoot those. So I've been getting into more of uh, like testing type of equipment. So, um, because it just really helps me feel better about my diagnosis. So if you go up to a blow motor that's just not operating properly, uh, instead of just condemning the whole thing, um, you can actually pull these tools out and you can figure out exactly what's going on if it's the module or if it's the motor um, or whatever the case is. So let me break it down real quick. 
you have the universal zebra system. This is what I use to check the actual module side of the motor, right? So it's a very small kit. You, you basically unplug the, um, the plug from the motor and you plug this in and it has these little toggle switches and you can basically tell it what speed to run in, right? So you're simulating what the circuit board would be doing. Uh, this is also another way of verifying uh, or checking if your circuit board is actually not working properly, right? So if the signal goes to the mo motor and it runs just fine, but it's not from the board, that's just another way of checking, right? Um, so anyway, this, the Universal Zebra, is all about checking the ECM module side of things, and you can go in there and uh, check everything there, which is nice. Now this particular kit comes with all of the little pigtail plugs for all the different type of ECM and X13 motors that are out there. So just depending on what you have, you pick the right one, you plug it into the ECM, uh, you know, alligator clip 24 volts to this to power it up, and then you're good to go. You can start testing and do whatever you need to do. And then um, the opposite side of that motor is the winding side of the motor. So that's where the side winder comes into play. So we've already tested the ECM module side. Now we're going to check the windings of the motor. And that's what this tool does. Pretty straightforward. It's very simple. You plug it in, right? So you're going to have to disconnect the module from the motor and then you unplug that, uh, the plug itself, right? And then you plug this into the winding section of the motor. And then you can go through and it'll tell you if all the phases, all three phases of the motor are intact or if they're not, they're open, have a little LEDs and it tells you what's going on. And then it'll also um, tell you if anything is shorted out, any of the uh, windings are shorted to, to ground. So um, anyway, just a good way of being able to test We've got a lot of you know, variable speed ECM type motors out there now. Condenser fan motors are variable speed these days. So anyway, having these two in your van to be able to check those motors to me, I really enjoyed it and I think it's very necessary. All right, next on the list, it's small. This is called the Hillmore Pocket Brake. So it's got some weight to it, but the idea about it it's very simplistic, it's got two little roller wheels on here, but whenever you're making any kind of metal transitions or flashings or just anything, and you need to be able to put like a cross brake in the metal to strengthen it up, that's what this is for. You can either, you know, put you a piece of S-lock or, you know, any kind of straight guide and you can run that across or you could just do it by eyeball. That's kind of what I do nowadays. I just kind of set it where I want to start, look at where I want to go and I just push across. And you just need to push with, you know, some strength there, pushing down kind of hard. Um, if you put the metal on like uh, some, you know, low profile carpet or some cardboard, something like that, where it, give, it, it allows the metal to kind of give down a little bit. That's where you're going to get um, the best crease or bend, if you will. Um, so anyway, we all have cardboard, you know, from the new equipment when we're taking them out. So that's an easy thing to use. Boom, you get your cross brakes. You can do all types of different things, but it's small, it's handy and uh, it's very quick. So um, small tool on this list today, but I think it's very, very important to have. It's uh, just made my job a lot easier when it comes to sheet metal. Oh, and last but not least is a custom tool that I made and I call it the package unit dolly. So it's a three wheel setup here. And this allows me to put package units for replacements um, where I can wheel them from my trailer to where they're going to be installed, either removing the old one to the trailer and the new one in place. You know, the days of having to roll the package unit on pipes through the yard are over. This thing is absolutely amazing. So I built this one myself. Um, I've seen this type of setup before, but not with the third wheel. Um, and so what I did is I customized what I've seen and redesigned it to where this is basically one man operation. You don't need two people. You don't have to balance the package unit while you're going through the yard, going over rocks or, or roots or whatever. Um, you put this on here, which is pretty easy to do because these wheels are pretty low profile. 
So you just pick up the unit a little bit and slide this under. Um, and then uh, you just slide it all the way on. It hits this lip right here, and that stops the unit from going this way. The middle of the unit is, is usually right here. So it's got a good balance point. I installed this hook here, and there's also another hook here. So you can put a, a strap over the top, a ratchet strap. And you know it's, you can secure it. It's not going to go anywhere. And then you can just push it through the yard, and it's super easy. Now, I, I installed these you know, flat free. These are solid wheels, so you don't have to worry about you know, the tires going flat. Um, this is a swivel wheel. And what I call this is the follow wheel. So you always want to have this on the back. So when you're, you're, you're pushing it that direction, basically, uh, and this just pivots how it needs to going through the yard. Um, and the, the way I designed it is it's extendable right here. So depending on how big the unit is, um, I can you know, modify it, the, the width, to accept that unit. Um, once you strap it down and the weight is on it, this, is, this doesn't move, it doesn't go anywhere. So um, it's heavy <laughs> because I, I built it very ro robust because I do you know, uh, commercial jobs like commercial package units and I wanted to be able to, to use this for uh, the light commercial package units as well, not just residential. And it's held up. I mean, this thing is pretty stout. But anyway, this has been a game changer for me because I'm a one-man operation. I can easily do package units now, not a problem. And uh, typically whenever I go to pick up the new equipment, I have this out. The guys at the supply house with the forklift will put it directly on here for me. I strap it down, put it up into the trailer, strap it. And then once I get to the job, I wheel it out, do my thing. So um, anyway, this has been a great addition to uh, all my tools and my whole setup for, you know, for my installs. It's been fantastic. All right, so that pretty much completes today's video. Those are the five tools that I wanted to talk about. Now, again, these aren't like all the tools. There's, there's some others that are amazing as well, but these five really kind of stood out to me over the last few years, and they've really helped me do my job. Uh, again, being more efficient um, and just being reliable with the work that I'm doing, right? Because some things that we do, we can't physically see, but if we have a process and we have tools that help us with that process, we can feel really good that we're doing a proper job, right? So for instance, the, the line set kit, we can't physically see if there's any oil residue in that line set um, before we reconnect it to that new system. But with that kit, how I can blow the plugs through and I know that it's coming out perfectly clean on the outside, well, I feel really good that that line set is clean and it's ready to go. So anyway, hope you guys got something out of this video. Um, if you wanna make one of these package unit dollars yourself, let me know uh, if you guys have any interest in them. Um, I can definitely you know, send you some specs or whatever it is that you need if you wanna make one yourself. I actually made uh, quite a few of them and sold them, but they're just so time consuming to make and they're super heavy to, to ship and all that. I just kind of stopped doing that. But anyway, hope you guys got something out of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, we'll see you later.